Okie dokie then guys. Today we've got another one of these little one of these little clock things. Um, now this one's only got uh, a, you know a dozen parts. Here it comes with a little a little uh, a set of instructions in picture form. And it comes with a parts list to connect that up to. There you go, I think you can see better from there. So on this side it will say, let's say it says C3. Oh it also says 30, 30p, so if I look on the back here, C3, yeah it's 30p. As in 30p per file. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 to 9 are all 1k transistors. Just a little quick one back, back here. Um, oh, and we're using the same 8089C2051 chip. Now, I can't remember if this works or if it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. I remember now. This is based on a pick. One six and six. There we go. Uh, this is a pick sixteen F six two eight A chip. But anyway, uh, of course we've got these other two. These other two that um, they don't work. They don't work. Now it's possibly something I've done. I've gone over the board over and over and over. I can't see it. I've taken lots of photos, sent them back, and a video to the people who sold it to me. They can't work out what's wrong with it, so they've refunded me, which is you know, okay, I suppose. So this one's a more, a lot more simpler affair. So we get in the, in the bag. We got our display, of course. One of those little annoying sounds. And as I can see, automatically this is going to be more than useless on the basis of um, it doesn't have any sort of battery backup. So. You got to be reliant on, um, you know, having having a good power source. The um, please remove seal after washing. The legs are a bit bent up on this, but we can sort that out. That's not a biggie. They tend to come a lot worse than this to be fair um, the chip itself apart from one leg which is bent inwards is fine the Atmel chip again same as what's in those other two um, no a little bit concerning unless this is it a resistor uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine this could be it but this is like a, a bank of resistors. Um, and I'm going to presume this is this. I'm going to presume that this is this. Uh, you can see that. This sort of bank of resistors here. But the process of elimination is going to say this thing is only going to fit into one, to one slot. Well, it looks like it's going to fit in there, so... Yeah. Okay. Without further ado, let's get on and build it. 
Um, just about right before I do the build, this is a um, C51 4 bits digital electric clock electronic production suite DIY kit. This is what it says on the description. Uh, I think it's got more as well. DIY kits FT. Well, I've got no idea what the FT means. Um, but yeah, that's what it says. I, I bought it off eBay uh, for £1.62, including the shipping. So, let's see what it can do. Oh, I press the button. Well, this looks like a very quick, straightforward. Uh, it's one zero zero. A uh, very quick, straightforward um, build. There seems to only be two of these normal uh, resistors. Very simple build, this one. Very, very simple. There's just something I've just noticed actually. It requires another resistor. Um, which doesn't actually seem to be here. I need 210k. Oh no, sorry, that's my mistake. No. It requires two 10k resistors, and I have the two 10k resistors here. Um, I'm going to put the little capacitors on now because it's 104. I love it when they just mark what they are here. I mean, I don't know how many of these kits I've built. I've not videoed them all because when I first started building the kits I didn't even think about videoing them. And I think people would have laughed at me anyway because I was having I was checking every single component. I didn't know how to read the markings on capacitors um, like I do now. And so I'd be checking and double checking and having to pull out a sheet of paper with all the you know the the different ways of looking at a capacitor and instead of just seeing 10 uh, 103 uh, I'd have to then convert that you know, so now it's 10 thousand 10 nano and, and, and 10 thousand pico and, and of course I'll work it work it out like that. So I think we can you know, populate this entire board um, in one foul swoop, which will make a nice quick. They certainly do like these eight five five zero chips, don't they? Our uh, friends out there in Asia, they do, they do, they do. Let me just rest that on something that will do. Oh, safety first, we must put the extraction fan on. Uh, my recycled extraction fan which actually works very very well. It's carbon filtered, uh, but it won't work if I don't actually pull it up around my lamp because I have all this set up. So I there we go, so I can, there it is on there again, so I can move it out of the way when it's not in use, um, so it doesn't just sit in the way. I'm a bit of a weird one about what goes in my body, man. 
and I really don't like the idea. <clears throat> you know, I really don't like the idea of uh, the lads or whatever else that's in here. I think it's probably not very good for you to be breathing in, so having some sort of extractor or something to blow the fumes away is a must really I don't know if you can hear the uh, the airband radio in the background I don't know if it's just the pilots that get to talk on the radio but that was a lady driving an aeroplane and before anybody says you don't drive an aeroplane you fly it, I know I was just wondering whether she knew she was driving it or flying it. Ha <laughs> ha. To all you ladies out there that really, I've looked at the stats, um, I don't get so many lady viewers. But for any of you that are out there, please don't be too offended. I mean, that's why I've got the airband on. Because if there's ladies flying the airplanes, if they're going to crash one into my place, I've got the airband on so I can hear it coming so I can get out of the building quick. I'm sure they'll be fine, it's only if they have to start doing, you know, reversing around corners or parking. I'm sure that when they pull up in the aeroplane at the airport, somebody else will jump in and park it for them. <laughs> See how much hate I get thrown at me for saying that. There we go. Oh. I mean, this isn't that far off being complete. We'll save that to last because there's no uh, on the capacity. There's no area marked where you put the negative side. It's just got a little positive marking for the positive side. Uh, and of course, it's the long leg on a new capacitor. That will go to the um, to go to the positive side. Now this thing looks like it's polarized. Ah, that's right, it is. And I can sort of see why it says it wants a wash, but that's a bit dis. That's that's a bit that's a bit dirty, really. That's a bit. I don't really like that. I don't. It's a bit. It's a bit mucky. A bit more mucky than what I'd expect. But what can you do? What can you do? I've just started putting a little circuit together for a tube valve. Uh, for a tube valve? <laughs> for a tube amplifier. I'm going to use the uh, the 12AX7 as it said in the States. But over here we call it the ECC83 I think. <laughs> yep, the ECC 83. So, uh, a little preamp on the building, a little stereo preamp on 12 volts. <coughs> Quite looking to the, uh, looking forward to, uh, to that. Oh, that's going to keep falling out on me, I'm sure. It's going to be probably the most awkward piece to put in now. It's going to be this little, this little bag of uh, resistors. Oops. Do you reckon I should turn that a little tiny bit over here? I don't know if you can see or not, probably, but I hope so. There, we put that on there. I'm a. Uh, Once I've done this, I'm going to go and hunt some more kits. I've bought a whole bunch of DSO, uh, the DSO 138. Um, so I've built quite a few of those uh, for people. And so I've, bought, I've built a whole bunch more. And I'll actually build one on, on film. 
Because uh, they're not bad. I mean, at the end of the day, they're, they're only toys. You can't. I don't think you should really look at this as a professional thing. Now, I know a fella that I sold one to. He's a he's a reverend in a church, and he's going to use it for tuning or helping tune or do some work with the organ. Uh, I think that's the only I think for little things you can you can use them I suppose. I'm not sure about what they're gonna be really like in a in a professional environment. Like I say, I've built, I don't know, about eight or nine of them, at least. Um, and I, I wouldn't use one, personally. There's a little bit too much noise on there for my liking. Okay. So we've just got these, uh, these switches, little momentaries. It's a good one. If I can get enough solder on the iron. Yeah, for anybody that's thinking about building these kits, um, getting a relatively decent soldering station, I would say, is going to take a lot of headache out of putting these little kits together because what I found is if you can't keep a stable temperature um, it can be quite frustrating because what it tends to do is if it gets too warm it just heats the tips up too much and then your tips start getting you know blackened off and, and scratchy and then you can't solder properly you know it doesn't just flow in nicely um, and that's quite a big frustration at least it was for me so I found that using 0.5 and below my favorite is 0.3 solder this is 0.5 I'm using at the minute because um, it's just a what I'd call a cheap and cheerful little kit but if it was for if I was putting together one of the frequency generators uh, the little F80, uh, FG085s then I would use the 0.3 and for the DSO 138s the 0.3 again because it's just nicer it's easier to work with you do tend to use a bit more of it that's because it's smaller but it means that your solder joints are so you know they're, they're, they're perfect and that's what you want I mean you want to be able to look at the little the solder joints afterwards and think yeah that's nice uh, I always think you've got to try and send them out as you'd expect to receive them in and having nice little solder joints there you can see that very well uh, I, I, I think it makes it a lot nicer I've got to cut the pins off there, the legs off there. But, uh, yeah, so let's not put that chip on just yet. Let's put the um, power input on. It's nice that it's marked on the back, positive, negative, so you can't make a mistake there. Uh, and then we got our, uh, our crystal. And 12 megahertz. So I might get swizzle, and that's it. That, that's the whole thing soldered up. That's 13 minutes, mind. Well, I suppose you know, if you don't chin wag. Oh. If you don't chin wag, it's uh, you can do it a bit quicker. So, right, let's nip those off. I don't know if I've shown people before. 
uh, these. Who's the main boy? Perrigan Commie. Made in Italy anyway, but they're very, very nice, very, very easy to use, very, very uh, nice in the hands, nice to, to cut with, very controllable, and just the perfect size and the, the angle is very nice on them. It's getting nice and tight. Yeah, definitely recommend those. I wouldn't recommend the lots of uh, things that I've used over these last these last six months. And I tend uh, I tend just to use these for, for doing the, the boards. I've got other ones for general. They're just general. And then if I really got a problem with cutting something, I've got these. And using these, I don't have that problem for very long. These are great for cutting out the pins or flybacks when you want to make yourself a high voltage power supply. That's exactly what I bought them for. Uh, this is, uh, you can see there's little dots down the bottom and the colons here. And there's a little dot down the bottom here, so I'm pretty convinced that it all goes down the bottom as it would. If it were regular, regular clock, you might have to fiddle about with the pins a little bit as they don't really line up. That's fine, that's why we, that's why we have tweezers. Even though those ones seem to be more than, not much more than useless. A second ago it was just one pin out of alignment, now it's the whole lot. But here we go, look at that look, get one in alignment and the whole lot going. Great stuff, so, you know, bend them out slightly, bend them out slightly just in case anybody ever tries to take these off just to make the lock a bit difficult. That's what we got so far. Let's stick a bit of solder on the back of these. And uh, yeah. Oh. Get some of the, it's the flux I think that makes it a mess. I keep my solder station on for this this thickness solder at 325 and if I need the soldering iron to stay on but I'm not using it all the time I always flick it down to 150 degrees it doesn't seem to mine there it doesn't seem to burn up anything on the tip you've got nothing to clean up when you go back to use it again um, and I also have one of these things as well, with the because that does help rather than just uh, banging it into the sponge all the time. Because that does make a nice silver tipped sorry not. And I do like the cable that's on this. It's uh, I don't think it's a silicon, but it feels a little bit like silicon. Um, but I don't think it'll be the same as um, some of the other silicon things which you very, find it very hard to tangle up. Right, so let's get this chip on the right way round. It's got a little marker, got a little marker, we'll just line those up. Yep, and they all looked in line until I get to put it on. Just flatten that down on that flat surface. Yep, I reckon that should get in. Double check again that it's lined up correctly. Cokes in there, check the other side. There. Yep, okay, well that's in. Now, let me just check that I soldered everything, and that I did. I just nip these legs off. Three legs at a time. Nip these off. And apart from the, I don't know what's on this, 
but it looks uh, just a little bit dodgy. I'll give it a wipe off. Um, apart from that, it all looks a okay. So, should we power it up and see what happens? What's the voltage? Yeah, I don't know what the voltage is. Uh, Okay, it doesn't say there, so let me just have a little check. Down here. And the voltage is... Yeah, it got like a million adverts first, before that. Three, three, three and six volts. Whoops. Between three and six volts. Okay. So we can use this five volt supply then. Uh, let's whip off. Let's whip these off here. Chuck that in there. Positive to the outside, wasn't it? Negative to the inside. Yep. So these are screwed in tight to make sure, I presume, that none of the screws are lost. Mm, that's not as helpful as what you might like, but there we go, we're in. I'm a bit concerned about what's on this speaker bit here. I'm not a germaphobe, I just I just don't want to get any, you know, uh, what would we call them in this country? Exotic problems. <laughs> okay, right, so I've restricted 300 millivolt, which should be plenty enough for this little circuit. Um, it's on 5 volts on the output, and I'm about to turn the power on now. So let's do that together. 3, 2, 1. We're on. And what have we got? What have we got? We have a stable. And that's pretty cool. I like that. It's not just in there flashing, it's not doing anything on toward. It's not telling the correct time as such, but that doesn't matter. I'm sure it's all adjustable. Oh, okay, that looks like a stopwatch is counting down. It's counting up. It started at 59 minutes and 52 seconds. A little bit annoying. I don't know how to switch it off. Okay. What would be nice is to know how to change the time. But what we can actually say is there is definitely life out of this and it does look like it's doing... Yeah, that's just counting. Okay, right. So uh, it's two twenty-three over here. That'll be fourteen twenty-three. Uh, okay. G F H somehow it got to 2300 so what I've got to do is look at uh, well that's quite mad on the actual camera for the clock it just said 2300 at the same time as I did this that was quite freaky because I thought it was 10 at the same time, but that's just the timer on the camera that said this video is 23 minutes long already. So, okay, I'm going to have a little fiddle around with this off camera and see if I can get it to um, go to the correct time. I presume this may be being an alarm or something. D, E, F, G, H, 
I, J, no, goes up to I. I've got no idea what that's about, but I did notice on the G, the LED didn't light up. But as it does light up there, I don't think it's a problem with the LED. I think it's just a problem with, you know, this. But anyway, even though I don't know how to work it, I bet if you give this to a little kiddie, two seconds, uh, they'd have it. Okay. We've now got the time of 7.04. I don't know how we got there, but it does allow you to adjust the time. It does work. It's fully functional. We can say that this one is a building success. Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, and just to say, uh, just because I'm finished now, the last thing I'm going to do is give my, give my tip a little wipe. Drop a little bit of solder on there. Just so there's a nice little blob at the end. Yeah. As you can see my extractor working. Can you see how well that's... That, that. What the? Uh, oh my life, it's going to do that at every hour. Can you imagine having a little clock like that? Yep. Well, I'm glad to say... This clock... I think the only time this is going to get in use is I might give it to my grandson. Uh, nah. nah. That's a bit of a fail. Unless you can turn that noise off, that beeping noise, every hour. Uh, that's not very good. But anyway, that's it. Bye, y'all.